And now let's start talking about heat transfer, how heat goes from one place to another. There are at least five ways in which heat can move. You may have heard of conduction, convection and radiation. There's also evaporation and advection. We'll talk about them all and probably in rather more detail than you've seen at school. We're going to start off with radiation, which in some ways is the easiest and in some ways the hardest. Now, let's imagine we have an object, like for example my hand or my jumper or the wall behind me. It's got atoms in it and these atoms are moving because it's not at absolute zero temperature. That means there are moving charges. The electrons and the protons in the hand and the molecules are all moving around. Now, whenever you get charge moving, that accelerating charge, that generates electromagnetic waves. So that means all the moving charge in my hand and my jumper is generating electromagnetic waves that will fly out into space. But of course, the reverse also happens. There are electromagnetic waves in this room. Uh, there's the lights. There's also a lot of the radiation that we can't see, infrared radiation. And that comes into my hand and it comes in the form of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. And when those hit the charges in my hands, it will cause them to oscillate and heat up. So there's a constant interplay. Every object is emitting radiation and receiving radiation. Now, the whole physics of how matter interacts with radiation is immensely complicated, and people can and do spend a lifetime studying it. I've certainly spent an awful lot of my career as an astronomer dealing with how radiation and matter interact in the gas clouds around black holes, and it's complicated. However, there is one case that is simple enough that we can write down equations for it, and it turns out to be often, but not always, very useful. This is what's called a black body. So basically, let's imagine, instead of just having my hand, we had some sort of hole like this almost entirely enclosed by matter. Now in this cavity, most of the radiation that's emitted from the hand will be absorbed by the hand at the other side. There's lots of opportunity for the radiation and the matter to interact. The same thing applies for anything very dark in colour, like, I don't know, the frame of this picture. In situations, in situations like this, you could assume that the radiation and matter are sharing their energy perfectly. And this is what's called a black body. By perfect sharing, we mean that if the radiation, say in this cavity, had more energy than the matter, it would hit the walls and cause the walls to heat up until they came back into equilibrium again. If the hand was hotter than the radiation, then electromagnetic waves would be generated and flood out into space. So the radiation and the matter are sharing their energy uniformly. This situation is it's called a black body, and this is one situation where you can calculate very precisely how much radiation something emits and how much radiation it absorbs. This calculation is too difficult for first year physics. You may see it in second year or later physics course, or you can look it up in textbooks. But you can write down simple equations for how, in this particular situation of a so-called black body for how much radiation something emits and how much it absorbs. Now, is this realistic? For example, looking at my skin, you might think that's not particularly black. But black body doesn't actually mean something is black. It just means it interacts perfectly with matter. Normally, it will look fairly dark because uh, if something is quite light, that means most of the radiation is bouncing off it rather than being absorbed. And that also generally means it emits radiation more poorly. But we can make my skin black. If you have a, a cavity, it looks pretty dark in there. That's because, once again, all the light has lots of chances to be absorbed. And also, it turns out, for example, that human skin is much blacker at infrared wavelengths. So I have fairly light skin at visible light wavelengths, wavelengths about half a micron. But if you looked at me out at uh, 5 or 10 microns, which is actually the radiation that the human body emits at, I'm actually black. All humans are black in infrared wavelengths. So actually quite a few things that you wouldn't expect to be black bodies can be approximated as black bodies. If you calculate this perfect balance between radiation and matter, we get an equation called the Stefan Boltzmann equation, which tells us that the amount of power something emits is equal for a perfect black body to its surface area 
times a constant, called the Stefan Boltzmann constant, times the temperature in Kelvin to the fourth power. Where the value of the Stefan Boltzmann constant is 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per meter squared per Kelvin to the fourth power. Now the way I remember this is it's 5678, 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. So that's a helpful way to remember this one, but it will also be in any formula list. So this tells us if something is a perfect black body, how much it radiates. Now of course there aren't but very many perfect black bodies, so what we often do is we put a emissivity fudge factor in there, which would be a number less than 1 to allow for the fact that something is not a perfect black body. For example, for human skin at the wavelengths you radiate, this is about 0 0.97, so pretty close. For most things, you can approximate it as you know, half or one or something like that, and you won't be far wrong. Um, the exception would be something like a highly polished mirror or steel, where the emissivity can be 1% or less. But for most objects, the emissivity is half or one or something like that. What wavelength does this radiation come out as? Well, that's given by something called the V in displacement law, the wavelength at which it peaks, lambda max. Lambda is used for wavelength for some reason, I don't know why. Is given by a constant B over the temperature, also in Kelvin, where B is called V in's displacement constant and has a value of 2.9 by 10 to the minus 3 meters Kelvin. So for example if you plug in a temperature of human body of about um, 36 centigrade which will be uh, about a little over 300 Kelvin this comes out at a wavelength of about 9 micrometers which is something the human eye can't see and it's what's called mid-infrared radiation. So when you see newspaper footage or TV footage of people looking for earthquake victims or something like that, they're using special infrared cameras that are sensitive to those wavelengths. Now that tells you what you radiate. But how about what you absorb? Well, there are two simple cases for this. One would be something like radiation coming from far away, like sunlight. In this case, the radiation is coming in uh, parallel. And so basically what you need to do is work out how much surface area you have, let's do it a different color, how much surface area you have facing the radiation. And the amount of energy in is just the intensity of the radiation. And the intensity will be something in uh, watts per square meter times the number of square meters the area A. So if you wanted to work out how much heat you're getting from the Sun, just work out the area facing the Sun. Now often the area can be a little complicated, so for example let's say you had a sphere like the Earth and you want to work out how much radiation is hitting it. So how much radiation does hit it? The simplest way is just to think of another, all the radiation that hits us is also going to go through a disk with the same radius at right angles. So you just have the intensity here and the area of a disk is just going to be pi r squared so the amount of radiation absorbed is just going to be the intensity times the area of the disk. And for many other surfaces uh, you can just find some approximate surface that intercepts all the radiation. So that's how you work it out if you've got radiation coming in from something distant like the Sun. Another situation where you often encounter is where you are completely surrounded by something that's radiating. So for example, let's say that's me here and I'm in a ice cave. So I'd have some temperature, uh, temperature pool and let's say my enemies have put me in a cave in a glacier and there'll be a temperature of the ice. How much radiation will I be receiving from that? Now in a situation like this where you are a black body, assumed to be a black body, and you are completely surrounded by black bodies, the thing to bear in mind is if 
the cave was at the same temperature as me, there'd be equilibrium. The heat that I would be emitting out would be balanced by the heat in. So if you want to work out the heat in, it would just be the heat that you emitted if you were the same temperature as the environment. So I will have some surface area A. The heat I emit is going to be given by the Stefan Boltzmann equation, so it's my surface area times sigma t pawl to the fourth. And the heat I absorb is going to be the same surface area, the same sigma, and t ice to the fourth. So if you are completely surrounded by black body, the net heat flow is just going to be A sigma T of U to the fourth minus T of the outside to the fourth. And that's because if the outside and you were at the same temperature, these two have to balance. So this is a useful way of working out what would happen if you are completely surrounded. So for example, an object sitting in a room, how much heat you're getting from the room around you.